Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Overtax Taxpayer Channel. I want to wish everybody a good Memorial Day, and I hope um, we are honoring the individuals who have served, both who came home and those who didn't. It's funny, when I go out, they use the word, yeah, we're celebrating Memorial Day. This is not a day to celebrate. It's a day to remember. It's not an excuse to get out and drink, but some people do. I just want to give my thanks to everybody who served and, um, and actually had to um, fight. And, and uh, I thank those who um, came home and, um, and honor those who who did not. I wanted to talk about the news and media outlets on today in particular and how the news media outlets during the Vietnam War are playing the same games that they're playing today. Memorial Day, remembering those who served, both the ones who came home and the ones who did not. I remember back in those days, I was just a little boy back then, but I remember, I remember clearly how our soldiers, upon coming home, were yelled at, spit upon, assaulted. I remember hearing stories of parents refusing to speak to their own kids again because of what they heard from the news media outlets what their children did over there. Yes, some people did some bad things who enjoyed the violence and took advantage of the, the demographics and the logistics. But those people, I can guarantee you, were few and far between. The news media outlets concentrated on those few bad apples and spread propaganda that all our soldiers were doing these bad things. Back in the day, they didn't have internet, remember? Back in those days, there was no internet. So who was responsible for telling all those people who did not have the nerve to go to Vietnam and fight. Where did they get the information that our soldiers were just doing very bad things to babies and women? Wiping out towns of innocence. Where did they hear that? There was no internet. The news media outlets exaggerating blowing things out of proportion, concentrating on one thing and trying to make it seem like it's the broad spectrum. I'm not going to read this in its entirety, but I want you to understand how the news media outlets played a role back then. The Jane Fondas and the actors also did the same thing back then as they're doing today. Since the beginning of World War II, television gradually became familiar to the public. Back then, there was not everybody had television. It was new. I remember when my television was just black and white, and there was a knob that you had to turn. And if you wanted to go beyond, what was it, 13, you had to change one dial to UHF or something, and then go back to the bottom and change the It was really archaic. At the end of the war, it became manufactured on a large scale. In the 1950s, there were only 9% of the American homes who owned a television. 9%. But this figure rose dramatically to 93% in 1966. In a survey conducted in 64, 58% of U.S. 
respondents said that they got most of their news from television. Television therefore became the most popular, I'm sorry, the most important source of news for American people during the Vietnam era. <coughs> when you control the news, you pretty much control the people. Especially when you're the only source of information. I want to just scroll down here to the Tet Offensive. In late January 1968, the Tent Offensive occurred and marked a major turning point in media coverage of the war. Even though the offensive was clearly a military failure for North Vietnam, the way the media reported told a contrary story. While focusing on a few unfavorable combat actions, such as the Battle of Yu or the Viet Cong's attack on the U.S. Embassy, the media missed the winning story of the big picture. They didn't report everything <coughs> as a whole, is what that's saying. Concentrated on a few things to feed their agenda and their belief. As a result of the public misled by the media, let me repeat that, as a result, the public misled by the media viewed the offensive as a triumph, triumph for the communists and quickly changed their opinions against the war. After the tent offensive, media coverage of the war became predominantly negative. Images of both civilian and military casualties were increasingly increasingly televised. <coughs> the percentage of victory stories reported by journalists decreased from 62 before the 44 after the tent. Additionally, many iconic pictures of the war, such as the ex execution of Viet Cong guerrilla or the napalm girl, exerted a negative and lasting influence on the public feeling. As the war became uglier on screen, the, its public support also declined significantly. Why, why did I read this again? Our military, the brothers and sisters who had the courage to go over there and fight, were so mistreated by the citizens who were misled by the news media outlet. Similarity, similarity, the similarity um, the same thing's happening today. That good soldiers who were spit upon yelled at as they were getting off their planes. And you got good people today who were yelled at, beat up at colleges, hats being torn off. These same people are being misled by the news media outlets today. Anyway, just some, just something to think about. Again, I hope everybody's having a good Memorial Day. I've been actually watching a lot of Memorial, a lot of Vietnam clips, a lot of historical documents on Channel 6, the PBS and all that stuff. So that's what I've been watching. Um, I'm not drinking today. Um, it's not an excuse to go out and drink. I'm not celebrating nothing. I'm just honoring those who have fallen and those who had the courage to fight. Take care.